Okay, so here we're just going to take another uh, quick look at an example in uh, non-equilibrium. And in this particular case, what we're attempting to do is two things. Uh, we're going to have a part A, and in part A we want to know what is the angular acceleration. And then in part B, uh, we want to know what is the force that this bracket applies to this rod which is going to pivot at this point. So the rod's going to swing down into this lowest position. So we want to know when the rod is in this horizontal position, the instant it is released, what is the angular acceleration? And then for part B, we want to know what is the applied force on that rod. So take a moment now and attempt this question yourself. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, identify our strategy for getting through this. And in part A, we're just looking at Newton's second law for rotation. So for part A, we're going to start with a tau net is equal to I alpha. Now, tau net is based off of all of the forces which are acting on the rod in conjunction with the axis of rotation. We already have an axis of rotation identified for us, so we'll use this point as our axis of rotation. Uh, it is the most logical point, so that's what we're going to use. All right, now. When it comes to the forces acting on this rod, remember that all forces are contact forces with the exception of gravity, at least as it is uh, relates to mechanics. And so we just have to look at the number of touches in order to establish the number of forces. And we can see that we have one touch. That's going to be due to this pivot point here. And so there's going to be a force which points up at that pivot point. So we'll just call that force applied. And then we don't have any other touches. So there's only one other possible force acting on the rod and that would be the non-contact force of gravity. And gravity acts through the center of mass. So the center of mass is located here and its position, its distance from the axis of rotation is one half of L. So we could say XCM is equal to one half L. Okay, so uh, now the force, of course, is going to be acting straight down. So this is the force of gravity. So when it comes to torque, we have the torque due to the applied force plus the torque due to gravity is equal to I times alpha. And so let's expand out torque. We know that this becomes... Uh, R applied, F applied, sine of phi applied, plus R gravity, F gravity, sine of phi for gravity is equal to, now we have a long thin rod, so we're going to end up using one of two possible um, moments of inertia, and because it's a long thin rod pivoted about its end, we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem or calculus to determine what that moment of inertia is. And we know that I about the end is equal to one third ML squared. And if it was through the center of mass, it would be one twelfth ML squared. But since our axis of rotation is not through the center of mass, we're going to use one third ML squared times alpha. And alpha is what we're looking for. So let's address these specific variables now as we go through the problem. If our axis of rotation is right here and the force applied to the end of the rod is at the axis of rotation, then that's going to make R applied zero so this whole term goes away. R for gravity we know is going to be equal to one half L. The force of gravity is just equal to mg. And then the sine, sine of phi for gravity is going to become 1. It's 1 because whenever you put your two vectors tail to tail, we have the r vector. And then we have the force vector. 
that's a 90 degree angle and because it's a 90 degree angle the sine of 90 becomes 1. All right, so that's going to leave us with R gravity times mg is equal to one third ml squared alpha. R for gravity is one half L times mg is equal to one third ml squared alpha. And so now we can cancel some things. Mass is going to go away. As we would expect, we're looking for acceleration, which is kinematics, and kinematics does not include mass. Uh, this L is going to cancel with one of those L's, and so if we move L to the other side and we multiply both sides by 3, we're going to get 3 halves G over L is equal to alpha. So this is the angular acceleration for this rod at this point. It should be obvious that it's going to continuously change. The acceleration will continuously decrease until that rod reaches its lowest position. So that when the rod is in this position here, the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration is going to be equal to zero. In both cases, it's going to be equal to zero here. So we're going to go from a maximum possible acceleration to zero acceleration as we go through that swing. Okay, so that is our answer to part A. Now, part B, we want to know what is the force applied. And this is just a standard second law problem. And all second law problems are going to start with an FBD. So we draw our box. This is just a standard FBD. This is not one that we have to use for rotation. You can still use this one, but it might be a little easier to understand what's happening from this one. So we have two forces. The applied force points up, and then the force of gravity points down, and that's it. We know that this is a situation of non-equilibrium, so we'll write for part B now, F net is equal to MA, F net becomes F applied minus FG is equal to a minus MA, and the reason it's a minus MA is because at this location in space the acceleration is in the down direction and that makes it negative. All right, we're looking for the applied force, so we get F applied is equal to MG minus MA. All right, now we don't know what A is, but we know what alpha is at this point in space. So we're just going to have to use a bridge equation to get alpha into this. And so we'll have F applied is equal to mg minus m alpha r. Okay, now alpha we know is 3 halves g over l. So we have F applied is equal to mg minus m times 3 halves g over l. And then finally, we have r. And r is what's happening um, for the center of mass. And the center of mass is located a distance of 1 half l away. And so I can write this as l over 2. So now we just have to clean it up. So the applied force is equal to mg minus, we have this L cancels with this L, and this 2 multiplies with that 2, so we're going to have 3 fourths mg. So we have F applied is equal to mg minus 3 fourths mg, which is just 1 fourth mg. So the force that's applied by the bracket to the end of the rod is equal to 1 fourth the weight of the rod itself.